Uh, hello and uh, welcome everyone uh, to this uh, uh, session. Uh, I hope uh, all of you know how to join the peer tech uh, session. Uh, the code is FCWNMM. Uh, you, I think I don't have to repeat this, I think. So I hope uh, I hope people know how to uh, do this. I'm, uh, uh, there's a bunch of questions that will come on Peer Deck and uh, it will be a bunch of questions that I will solve. Try to give you some idea on how to solve and there's also some uh, collab types presentation that I was thinking of doing. So it's a combination of multiple things. I hope uh, people are comfortable with all of that. Okay, I think I'm more or less set. Okay. <coughs> so, so, so I request you to please uh, mute your mic. I, I hear some honks. I think maybe some of you are on the streets. Uh, uh, thanks for joining in the evening. It's, uh, yeah, I think I'll put in the link to the Peer Deck session. Please join on Peer Deck. That's also important to see. Okay. I need to see how many people are. Okay, so I think uh, maybe that's not too easy. So that's okay. So I think let's uh, let's wait for a few minutes and then uh, carry on. Let me maybe I should turn my video on. Okay, so uh, that's uh, I think let's just wait for one more minute. Maybe people will come in and then we can start. Okay, so so what what uh, I planned is a very simple uh, session in some sense. Uh, we'll begin with uh, some very standard sort of problems, which are you know must have skills if you go through stats two. Uh, we'll we'll do those a little bit as I think uh, enough people had said that they found those parts also difficult. So we'll do that first, and then uh, these should be easy. I mean, assuming many of you have actually been following the course. Uh, this should be the first few questions should be relatively easy, uh, and then I'll show you a couple of things maybe in collab, uh, which uh, would be a bit more interesting. Okay, so let's get started. Now is as good a time as any. Uh, so the first uh, and one of the most critical things you would ever need to know in uh, in stats is the normal distribution, and uh, many of you had marked that the normal distribution you found difficult among the people who responded to the survey at least. Uh, so uh, let me just quickly go through. This is the density function for the normal distribution, this mean mu variance sigma square. It can technically take any value on the real line. Uh, those things, of course, are meaningless in practice. So you, 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 but this is a good approximation to many, many, many uh, physical and actual processes that you see around you. So by default, people uh, assume normal distribution when they don't know much. Okay. Uh, the standard normal, which we will uh, call Z, is actually normal distribution with mean zero and variance one. So this is the sort of picture that I've depicted there. Uh, the CDF of this PDF, when mu is zero and sigma is one, uh, is denoted capital FC. Okay, and uh, very interestingly, the general PDF is actually uh, you know instead of x, you need to put x minus mu by sigma. In the in the standard normal, you would get uh, the the arbitrary PDF. So it's got lots of wonderful, nice properties. Uh, so the CDF is simply, you know, FC of uh, X minus mu by sigma. Okay. So these are uh, critical relationships. Uh, quite often you want to find what's the probability uh, that uh, a lot of people are saying yes. Oh, what? It's audible. Okay. Good. Good. That's audible. Uh, so uh, uh, a lot of the, the, so the main events that we are interested in when you have a continuous random variable x or when you want to model something as a continuous random variable x is uh, probability that x is less than something, probability that x is greater than something, and probability that x falls into a certain interval. OK, 
Okay. Uh, but yeah, I mean, these slides will be shared. There's no problem. I think many of them are probably repetitions from other things you have. Okay. So, uh, so, so for all of those, all you need to do is this FC. Okay. Uh, FC is the, the CDF of the standard normal. So any probability, any problem involving normal distribution, uh, you can express your answer in terms of FC or FC inverse, something like that. Okay. So those are the standard things. Uh, you have to sort of keep a mental picture of this uh, of the uh, of this graph. Okay, and uh, notice where the small x will come. And then uh, x less than x is, of course, to the left of it, the area to the left. OK, so some people are complaining about voice breaking. I don't know what I can do. It seems like for many people, it's clear. OK, so OK, so let's proceed. So so, so you, you should have this degree of comfort with uh, how this uh, different expressions are written. Uh, you can make some mistakes here, but at least you should you should know how to do this. So this was bread and butter of statistics. You, sh you should know how to do this uh, uh, if you uh, you know if you want to find probabilities uh, for these things. Okay, all right. So having said this, uh, this must be old stuff for most of you. You must have you must know this. Uh, so assuming that you know this, we jump into the first problem. Very very direct, straightforward problem. It's you probably have seen it if you saw all the material. Uh, that's being shared with you you would have seen a problem like this it's a small variation uh, on uh, a problem uh, used. okay so you have a normal uh, distributed random variable with uh, uh, you know mean 10 and variance 25 uh, what is probability that x is less than 8 so you need to express your answer in terms of this fc as you should Right, so the previous slide had the formula for you. Uh, hope you remember that. These are these are things that you need to uh, uh, write down. Okay, let me give only one minute. It's it's a very oh, people are slowly writing down. I'm not seeing. Uh, so please respond on peer deck. Uh, you don't respond on chat. Respond on peer deck. I'm seeing slowly responses are coming in. So let's uh, look at that. Okay, let me wait for a minute more. If you're typing in, please do so quickly. Okay, so I think there's about 40 responses or so. Uh, Maybe I should move and show the responses at this point. This is a reasonably easy question. Uh, so yeah, FZ of minus 0.4. So be careful. The common mistake is plus 0.4. Uh, this is X less than 8. So it's 8 minus 10 by 5, right? So it's minus 2. So minus 0.4. Some people have said just minus 0.4. It's just lazy to write uh, the thing. It's not minus 2 by 25. So this is another common mistake. Instead of sigma, you're using sigma squared. Uh, you need to use sigma, which is 0.5. If sigma square is 25, sigma is just 5. So it's minus 2 by 5. Uh, make sure you're not making a mistake. I don't know how the person got 0.08. Uh, that's incorrect. It's minus 2 by 5, and that's the correct answer. Okay, so most people have got the answer right. So uh, this is just a direct substitution into the expression, and you'll get it. Okay, so, so these are bread and butter problems. Let's see one more, which is x greater than 16. Once again, I'll, I'm going to go very quick with this. Uh, these are questions that you must have seen several times already. It's, it's relatively straightforward, just a question of practice. And uh, one needs to write down this very quickly. Oh, 
Okay, so I think more than 40 responses have come, more than 50 responses have come, and many people know the answer uh, by now to this question. It's relatively straightforward. So 1 minus FZ of 1.2 is correct. Okay, so this is correct. Uh, so people are typing out uh, the full expression here, 1 minus FC of 1.2, 1 minus FC of 6 by 5, that's correct. Okay, so notice the mistake here, there's a minus 1.2, that's again a mistake, you're being slightly uh, less careful here. It's 16 minus 10, that is plus 6, and you do 1 minus only after the FC, right? So that's the, the area to the left of uh, 16. So you want the area to the right. So you do one minus to the probability. What's inside the argument doesn't go negative. Okay, it's not FZ of minus, uh, right? It's, it's one minus FZ. So uh, okay. So you, you can also write it another way. Uh, FZ of minus one point one by five. Is that correct? Let me see some. Uh, is, is this correct? FZ of minus one by five. No, sir. No, that's not correct. No. Okay, what about FC of minus six by five? Is that correct? No, sir. No, sir. No. Okay. Okay, so, uh, all right. Anyway, so let me, let me hide the responses for now. I think enough people have responded. Uh, so I think, There's no option you have to write down the expression. I mean, it involves FC and all that, so I'm not giving options, okay? It's just writing down the expression. Okay, question C is, uh, this is, uh, suppose X is normally distributed. Mean mind, mind in showing the right answer, it is 1 minus 1.2. 1 minus FC of 1.2, yeah, that's correct. 1 minus FC of 6 by 5, that's the correct answer. Okay. Why why one minus F Z of six by five is wrong and one by two is right? No, no, one point two is equal to six by five. Both are correct. Yeah. Both are correct, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Six by five is exactly equal to one point. Okay. Right. Okay. So uh, so the next question is right here. Uh, X is normally distributed, same distribution again. Uh, what is the probability that x falls in the range 4 to 12? Okay. Maybe a little bit more time for this one. People are writing in very quickly. So let's see. Okay, so this one must also be relatively straightforward, I think. Okay, so there are about 50 people have responded. So let me just go through. Yeah, this is correct. Uh, the answer that's given here is correct. FZ of two by five minus FZ of minus six by five. So it's exactly correct. Uh, uh, there's no option you have to type uh, for type responding to the given questions, not on the chat window. Don't type on the chat window. You have to go to joinpd.com. Can somebody put that information there on the chat, please? Uh, go to joinpd.com, log in with your, uh, uh, this uh, FCWNMM, okay? So this is what you need to do. So this is uh, the peer deck uh, login. Uh, this is a thing. Uh, that's what you need to do, okay? Okay, so so that's good. I think uh, most people have uh, got this right. So let me let me uh, go back here and then uh, prepare for. Uh... Sir. Yes. I have a question, sir. Yes, please. Sir, since Z is symmetric, the mm -hmm. normal curve is symmetric. Is F Z of um, minus X is equals to F Z of X? That's what I was asking people and uh, people were a little confused by that. So I'm going to come to that just one minute. Okay. Thank you. So you can see the screen and I'm going to write something now in the screen and uh, you may get confused by it, uh, but the symmetry in the normal uh, distribution is quite important. The point made by uh, who was spoke just now, I, I'm sorry, I couldn't get your name. Uh, that was uh, perfectly right. So, so, so you have, uh, you have the normal distribution, excuse my 
drawing and writing i have zero skills in drawing and writing uh, so so supposing you look at one point so 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 this is uh, uh, f uh, this is the normal with uh, mean zero and variance one let's say right so if you if you take a point uh, i don't know some z not here okay and uh, you look at you look at minus z not okay right this area you can argue because of the symmetry is equal to this area so probability that z is less than minus z not is equal to the probability that z is greater than z not do you agree okay so the normal distribution uh, satisfies the symmetry property so probability that z is less than minus z not is the same as probability that z is greater than plus z not do you agree okay so convince yourself that that's true so z and minus z have the same distribution okay so so these two probabilities are exactly the same and uh, this one is the same as one minus probability that z is uh, i guess less than z not also right so this is a normal distribution so this is true so so instead of writing one minus probability of z less than minus uh, less z less than z not you can also write probability of uh, z less than minus z not so so i asked you that question uh, about 1 minus fz of 1.2 this is actually equal to what fz of 1.2 i'm sorry minus 1.2 minus 1.2 okay so these two are equal okay yes. so this is uh, this is a famous uh, symmetry property of uh, Gaussian distributions, and I hope uh, that part is clear. And one can ask very many nice questions uh, based on symmetry. Here's the next one. Go ahead. This is going to be the easiest thing for most people to type. Once you get the idea, it's uh, more or less so, forward. Yeah. What you just explained earlier that mm -hmm. uh, priority x is less than x naught is equals to priority of x is greater than x naught. This will only be valid if it's symmetric around uh, zero, right? It's so valid for the z for the standard normal or any other mean zero also is okay. If mean but is non-zero, right? yeah. Um, for the values we have to scale right Minus. um i i don't think uh, this uh, scaling matters uh, too much i think uh, the scaling doesn't matter uh, the the mean is zero it will hold okay okay so thank you okay so i think a huge number of responses and i think all of them will say point 0.1 i'm not surprised uh, somebody says 0. 0.9. Okay, so that's uh, it's a little bit of a different reading. Just notice. So, so always picture these probabilities on the graph. When I, I like to do that, it helps me uh, keep uh, keep a check on whether or not I'm getting ballpark correct answers, right? So, so uh, uh, mean zero normal probability x less than minus five. It's a bell curve. X less than minus 0. 0.5 is 0. 0.1, and x greater than 0. 0.5 greater than five. I mean, mean is zero, right? I'm not going to get 0. 0.9 probability x greater than 5, right? So it's going to be 0 0.1. So, so keep that picture in mind and try to make sense of the answer. I think that part, that kind of skill is extremely valuable. Uh, it's very important. Okay, so 0 0.1 is the correct answer indeed. Now let's look at the next one.
Okay, so there's enough responses have come in. I think uh, the answer should be okay. So they said point 0.1. That's maybe they mistakenly entered for the previous one. Point 0.8, point 0.8, point 0.8, point 0.8. Absolutely. I think once again, uh, close your eyes and imagine uh, what is being asked here again. Point 0.2 versus point 0.8. How do you settle this? Just, just imagine the thing. It's a mean zero normal bell-shaped curve. What's the probability of between minus 5 and plus 5? It's, it's probably something that's going to be big, right? It's, it's not uh, something that's going to be small. Uh, keep, keep that picture and then try to do this problem instead of mechanically, just algebraically writing equations, so chances of making mistakes will go. Okay, So this is going to be a big number, 0.8 uh, is the correct answer. That's uh, it's very nice. You just used uh, to, to, to look at. Okay. All right, good. So let's move on to the next one. <clears throat> Uh, I, I think uh, there seems to be considerably more participation numbers in the Zoom session than the peer deck. I think uh, maybe someone should keep posting the peer deck link uh, repeatedly uh, so that uh, uh, people can come in there and enter their answers. Okay, so the number of responses is uh, slowly creeping up beyond 100, I think. So let me just show. Uh, what the answer is 0 0.025 is correct. Ah, 0.25, you missed the 0 0.5. Don't make a simple mistake there. Check your answers. It's not 0 0.05, it's 0 0.025. It was 0 0.05 uh, gets split into two of the tails on either side. Uh, the Gaussian has two tails, right? It's a very naughty distribution. So, uh, so, so you have to look at uh, 0 0.025 uh, as the correct answer. Check that. It's not 0 0.025. It's 0 0.025. It's 2.5. Oh my God. Right? When I see a number like 2.5, I get really, really scared. No probability can be that big. Uh, even however big we think we are, probabilities cannot be bigger than 1. K.05 okay, is a common wrong answer. You, you, you're forgetting to divide by 2. Uh, so you need uh, 0 0.025. Okay. Okay. Good. So I think... Uh, Okay, so <laughs> people are happy with the easy questions. Yeah, of course, all questions that I ask are easy. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. So the next important skill uh, you need to have is, uh, again, an out-of-the-box calculation. Yeah, of course, I agree with you, of uh, inverting uh, CDFs, okay, normal CDFs. It's a very bread and butter skill. I'm, I'm once again going to go through this very fast. Uh, how do you find an A such that, you know, probability that X less than A is a given value, right? So mean is 5, variance is 16, and how do you get this? You can express your answer as FC inverse. You, you don't need to actually find the numerical answer. You can write uh, FC inverse. Actually, you know, in my opinion, quiz questions are also like this. They are not any different than this. It's, uh, it's just that there may be, you know, a little bit disguised sometimes, but most often they are like this. <laughs> it is true. I mean, I'm not being too funny there. Not really. It's not meant to be insulting or anything. It's just that it's... Uh, is a little bit 
Okay, people are taking time with this question. So, so, so probability of X less than A is going to be written in terms of FC. And then uh, uh, you can do the inverse and then solve for the A in some uh, direct way. Okay, so this is something important Hello, to write down. Yes. Sir, can you explain what is FZ inverse? Yeah. Okay, so, all right. So maybe I should take a little bit of time here with this question. No, I think a lot of people are saying I'm asking two easy questions. So I said, maybe I got a little carried away. So let me, let me go back to this uh, jam board here and try and write down. Okay, so uh, see, Oh, or maybe I should just keep the same picture here, right? So, or maybe I'll go this. Okay, so I have a, a normal distribution, right? And let's say this is mu and uh, this is, let's say normal mu sigma square. And uh, there is like a A here and I'm interested in this area, right? So what is this area? This, I think many, many of you, are able to literally answer very, very quickly. You say Fz of what? A minus mu by sigma, isn't it? So, so, so this Fc function is a, is a nice function. It's, it's monotonic, it's, uh, it's got all the correct properties. So it's actually invertible, okay? What is invertible? If you have uh, y equals f of x and f is an invertible function, you must have studied this in math one, okay? Maybe you promptly forgot after that, but if y is f of x and f is invertible, uh, what is true? x equals f inverse of y, right? Yes. So the capital Fz is an invertible function. Okay. So because of that, I can write what? I can write a minus mu by sigma equals fc inverse of probability that x is less than but okay so this is the crucial step i think once you once you get this step everything else is sort of worked out uh, now in this problem in this particular problem this value is given as what What is this value? 0 0.02. 0 0.02, that's it. So once you write that, you get your A in terms of your mu, sigma, and this point, Fz inverse of 0 0.02. So you'll get A equals mu plus sigma, Fz inverse 0 0.02. I think mu was 10 and sigma was four or something like that, forget it. Just plug it in, you'll get the answer. Is that clear? So Fz inverse is no new quantity. I mean, I'm, I'm not defining any new mathematical idea here. It, it's the same uh, function inverse that you've been studying from math one, okay? But sir, the graph is not looking like inverse, invertible. Ah, where do you see the graph of Fz? Capital so, Fz, where do you see the graph of capital Fz? Tell me in this, have I drawn the graph of capital Fz? How many of you think sir, you can see the less graph? Than minus, I think. I'm sorry? Minus infinity. This is fx. Yeah, this is small fz, right? This is the density function. This is not the CDF, right? Remember, the bell curve is the PDF, the density function. It's not the CDF, capital FC. The, the, usually, most of the PDFs are not invertible, okay? But the CDF is always invertible. Because CDF goes from 0 to 1 monotonic, okay? And you might remember from your math 1 that monotonic functions with some properties are always uh, invertible. Okay. Yes. Okay. So that's, okay. that's important. Okay. Good question though. Okay. So let's move on. Uh, move back to this. I think it was just uh, it's about 60 responses. So I'll give a little bit more time. Let people fill up the responses. Or maybe people are already bored. No. Some people are writing it up. So let me just give it a little bit more time, maybe the 10 more responses and then we'll move on.
Okay, so that's close to 80 responses. So let's just see. Uh, five plus four FC inverse. Okay, so this looks uh, correct to me. That's good. Ooh, there's some wrong answer here. 5.08, I don't know, but I don't think that's correct. Uh, five plus four FZ inverse 0 0.02 is correct. Okay, so five plus four FZ inverse 0 0.02. That's the correct answer. Okay. So spell oh. in exam also, if such questions come, we need to write in format of FZ inverse only. Uh, in the exam, typically, I think uh, they will give you the value for FZ inverse of some number that you are interested in. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. So this is the next question. Okay, so very simple, same distribution. Uh, okay, so this is a question from Yusuf Hassan. I think uh, I'm sure I, I described that as a property of all CDFs in the in the uh, in the lecture. Please go take a look at the properties of CDF in the lecture. I, I probably have a proof for that there. Okay. Yeah, you, there's a lot of ways to prove it. Yeah, I think formulae will be there in the exam. All, all formulas will be shared on the exam, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. There will be a formula sheet. Okay. So there's uh, mean 5 uh, in standard deviation 4, which is variance 16, right? So, and then but the question here is slightly different probability that x is greater than a. Right? It's not less than A. Uh, so things will change a little bit. So how many questions in quiz one and all? Please ask in the discourse forum. I think the, the instructors will answer that. I think it's better if it's answered in the discourse forum. Okay. Okay, so I think I have given suggestions for textbooks in the lectures. Okay, let me see. I think people are struggling a little bit with these kind of questions. Maybe you haven't seen this before. This is important. Okay, so being able to write down A uh, in terms of the inverse CDF is very, very important. It's part and parcel of the skills that you need in basic stats. Okay, so, so you can write probability that x uh, greater than a. Anyway, let me just see how the answers shape up. So slides also be shared. This yes, slide. yes, yes, the slides will be shared. With solutions also? Uh, yeah. Solutions, I'm not sure if the, I mean, but you know, have you not seen other versions of this problem? I think I just picked it up from an earlier version and I believe these problems have been shared with you in some capacity. So if you've not seen these problems before, then I think you're not paying. Uh, uh, so, so, so these problems, I believe, are in the portal. Okay, in yeah, the course some, portal. Some, some this this exact same problem is there. If I'm not wrong, I've, I've used it. I've used uh, I've used this problem earlier in a session like this, and I think this was available for everybody to go through. Right. Uh, make make sure that you look at this kind of problems. Okay. Oh. So this problem came in the mock, but uh, they haven't provided the solution for the mock yet. So we're still waiting for how to solve it. But this problem, wasn't this problem given to you earlier? No, no sir. not in the weekly. Uh, no, sir. I think it's there in first week, I believe. I was Sorry? suspecting. I was suspecting. No, sir. I did not go through that. But, but I think this such type of question is not there. Sir. Okay. I it, it, will, it will be helpful, sir, if it is shared today. The solution that you will be. I don't know. I think if any instructor is in the in the meet, I'm not sure if they are there. Please uh, take a look at it because I think this problem I've used in the past uh, in other sessions like this. So and uh, these questions in my at least I I believe that they were already shared with you. Uh, not in the portal, sir. I have not seen, but 
maybe okay. I, I, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll raise it with the instructor. Okay, okay. okay sir. Because we have only two days, so we can devise it. Okay. I'll oh, ask. I'll, you, I'll ask. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so this question, let me see what the responses are. Some 80 responses have come in. It looks like it's not uh, clearly very, very straightforward for everybody. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. So somebody is putting it in the chat window. So please enter, please respond in uh, Peer Deck. Uh, maybe I should take a little bit of time to go through this one. Uh, so so I, I can do it in the next one. So, it's okay. so again, the picture is the same. And instead of plus, there is a minus. That's all. I think it doesn't change anything. So you have mu. Uh, this is n mu sigma, let's say. And you have a. And then I've asked for probability that x is greater than a, right? So uh, probability that x is greater than a is 1 minus fz of a minus mu sigma right and uh, so if you do this the same inverse i'm going to do it quickly in one step uh, don't uh, uh, get confused by this so this is going to be fc inverse of what what will come inside so 0 0.999 yeah so it's one minus probability that x is greater than a right or if you want you can write probability that x is less than a okay so this is FC inverse. And then after this, the solution is easy. Do you agree? Okay, so it's just mu plus sigma. But what, what goes inside the FC inverse is uh, what's critical. So now let's go back and see if people uh, got an answer. So, so the answer here must be uh, mu plus sigma FC inverse of 0 0.999 because that's 1 minus this. I think mu is 5 and then this is 4. Okay, so 5 plus 4. Fz inverse point nine 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 is the question. So let's just see. So, yes. but actually, the question is uh, inverse of CDF of the standard normal with mean zero and variance one, right? Mm. So, how does this impact the solution, sir? I'm sorry. So, the second part of the question has like inverse of CDF. I mean, yeah, I so, so the FC that I put here, okay, so, so, okay, so let me maybe think. So FC inverse till that point, I understood, but uh, while substituting mu and uh, sigma here, we should be yeah. substituting zero and one, right? No, 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 no. Okay, okay. I think, uh, see, the, 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 this is N of mu sigma, right? Okay, so the, 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 you start with a, a normal distribution with N of mu sigma, okay? And here, when you want probability that x is greater than a, where x has mu, mean mu and variance sigma, right? You do one minus fz. What is this fz now? Okay, the FZ? standard normal. Standard. It is the CDF of the standard normal, not the CDF of this x. Okay. Okay, 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 sir. Okay, thank you. But okay, so the yes, mu sir, and yes. sigma are five and four. Okay. Okay, that still holds good. Thank you, sir. Yes, yes, yes. And sir, one more thing. Uh, yes. The CDF of the normal distribution is really hard to find. So we do not need to find the CDF of like to think think about finding the CDF of the normal distribution in the exam, right? Uh, in the exam, yeah. No, no, we, we will not ask you for okay. computing the CDF. So okay. the values will be given to you if that's needed. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, I have one question. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, the way I have calculated it, uh, I have calculated probability of x greater than a is equals to probability of x less than minus a. Now, that's not true in this case. Why? Why is it not true for x? Uh, yes, sir, because x, x, it's x has mean mu. 5. Yeah, so it's not true for that. So if you do it for x minus mu, that will be true, but not for x itself because it's not simple. Okay. okay sir, thank you. Okay, so I think uh, many people hopefully have got this answer right. Let me just see. Yeah, so so yeah, one minus point uh, zero zero one. So it's it's correct. I think this is this is the correct answer. Five plus four F Z inverse of point nine nine nine. So watch out for that. Okay, it's not point zero zero one. Okay. Okay. Good. So this is uh, these these kind of problems are uh, uh, maybe people are agreeing or not so trivial. Uh, here's the next one. Right. 
sir can you please flash the formula screen one more time sir ah oh, that will take a long time i have to yes. go like so many uh, slides forward and i will lose this and people can't respond on peer deck okay okay okay, okay sir okay So this is very important later on in the course when you do uh, things like uh, in statistical methods like hypothesis testing and all that uh, you love to always estimate values for a which satisfy these kind of properties so i think uh, you should get good practice make sure uh, you can quickly write these things down these are at some level these are very basic simple expressions but it's possible to make mistakes always visualize with the picture and uh, the area and then things will be much much clear okay
Okay, so maybe we should go to the Jamboard and work this out. Okay, and I'll come back and show you the responses once I'm, I'm done. Uh, so this question again asks you to do this. Okay. There is a u equals five uh, thing. And then what's given is probability of mod x minus five is less than a equals 0.95, right? This is what's uh, given to you. Uh, so a, right? So this is uh, normal mean mu and variance sigma squared, okay? So there's a, there are various ways in which you can do this problem. The way to approach this is, uh, this in, uh, you, you can do it in uh, so many different ways. Uh, so, so maybe, you know, I, I'll just do it the slightly uh, laborious way. Uh, so, so this is the same as what? X being less than five plus A and greater than five minus A, is that okay? Is that okay? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Yeah, so that's that's this area. Five minus A and five plus A. And uh, the area is here, isn't it? Okay. Uh, like I said, there are various approaches. There are so many different ways in which you can do this. Uh, I'm just going the sort of uh, uh, slow, slow and steady way. Okay. So this probability is nothing but so this should be equal to what? Probability of mod x minus five less than a is the same as what? Fz of five plus a minus five by sigma. Is that okay? Minus what? Fz of five minus a minus five by sigma. Is that okay? I'm just doing it the laborious way. I'm, I'm sure many of you are already uh, there with the answer. I'm just doing it slowly. Okay. So now what happens here? This is the same as Fz of A by sigma minus Fz of minus A by sigma. Is this okay? What do you do with this? Where do you go from here? Yes, sir. Are, yes. are many people stuck here? Yes, sir. You're stuck here? No, so we use yes, the yes. symmetric symmetricity. Yeah, so you can use the symmetric trick, right? So what is mm -hmm. Fz of minus A by sigma? One minus. One minus Fz of A yes. by sigma. So this just becomes two times. Okay, so maybe I should write it a little bit more laboriously, right? Fz of A by sigma minus one minus Fz of A by sigma. Is that okay? Yes, yes, sir. So you get this as two times Fz of A by sigma minus one. So this number is given as 0.95, right? So this is 0.95, isn't it? So this needs to be equal to 0.95. Is that okay? So from here, you will get an expression for A. Is that okay? Well, I'm fine with this. So what do you get here? So A equals? Sigma times sigma is four. Fc inverse of what? What will you have inside? One point nine five divided by two. One point nine five divided by two. One point four seven five. Zero point four seven five. One point four seven five. Zero point four seven. Zero point four. Zero. Where do you get four seven five? So it will be one minus of. 0.975 by 2. 0.975. Yeah. 0.975. Yes. 0.975. Is that okay? Is that okay? Yes. I'm happy. Okay. There are various uh, quick ways to do this. Okay. Uh, I think uh, the, the more comfortable you become with this transformation of X minus mu by sigma, 
the more uh, quick you can uh, you can do this, right? So, uh, for instance, if uh, uh, if I quickly want to do it, I'll divide this mod x minus phi by less than a both sides by sigma. Okay. So on the left hand side, I'll have mod z in fact less than a by sigma, right? So now mod z less than a by sigma probability of that is 0.95. So from there, I will quickly get that, uh, you know, I can, I can write that in terms of uh, uh, one minus, uh, you know, the, the FC inverse. So, 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 so from there, I can go directly into an equation involving A by sigma. So, and that will give you the same answer. Okay. So you can get the same answer in uh, so many different ways. In fact, you can get this as four times FC inverse of minus 0 0.025. Do you agree? Is this correct? Are both these things the same? Uh, sir, how four came, sir? Can you explain? That's oh. sigma, right? Sigma okay. is four. A by sigma is this. Okay, sir. Thank you. Sir, okay. Yeah, I'm just swallowing a few steps. Uh, I'm expecting that you will work it out on your own and convince yourself that that's true. Okay. Yes, sir. So, I had one doubt. Yeah, yeah. Just go, uh, just give me one minute. I'll, I'll I'll quickly show you how I would do it if I were doing it like you. So I would write x minus five by sigma is less than a by sigma. And this guy is actually mod z, right? So zero one normal. This is 0 0.95. So in my mental picture, I will have my z, okay? And uh, mod z less than something. This is minus a by sigma plus a by sigma. This area is 0 0.95. So both, both of the tails together is 0 0.05. So what is this area? 0 0.025. Okay, so I know immediately I have my FZ of minus A by sigma being equal to 0.025. Okay, maybe I should write it on this side. FZ of point minus A by sigma equals 0 0.025. And that will give me four times FZ inverse of, uh, did I get it right? Yeah, no, no, no. I think the minus came out on the right side. I'm sorry. Okay. Maybe I got it wrong. Sorry. The minus should have come on this side. Apologies for that. Okay. Sir, could you please explain once again the graph part? Okay. I'm sorry. Which one? The graph. How I got this graph? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let me come back to you the after the... Part. There was a question from somebody. I think there was okay, somebody okay. who had a question. Yeah, go ahead. Whoever had a question. So I did this only. I was just going to ask you, is this correct or not? Which one? Uh, what I wrote just, finally? Just now, yeah. I just got okay. it in 0 0.025 form. Yeah, yeah. FZ inverse 0 .0, 0 0.025, then the minus 4 will come on the outside. Okay? It doesn't make any sense to put minus inside the FZ inverse. Yes. Okay. Uh, what is the other? Uh, Somebody want, wanted the graph same. part to be explained again. Right? Yeah, the bottom one. Sir. The bottom one. Which bottom no, part? No, the, the, yeah, the lift bottom. Part. I'm sorry? Yeah. The lift bottom part of the graph. Yeah, yeah. So, so if you have uh, the, if this is a standard normal now, right? So this is like what? This is normal zero one, right? Keep that in mind. And between minus a by sigma and a by sigma, I have a probability of 0.95, right? What will be the probability outside of that 0 0.05, right? On yes, both sir. tails together, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what will be the probability on each tail? 0 0.025. Okay. Okay. So, okay, and uh, FZ of minus A by sigma is actually the probability on the left tail, right? That's 0 0.025. Mm -hmm. That's the equation that I wrote down. Okay. Do you see that? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So, the 4 is sigma, is it? Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Excuse me. So, why is the minus? This is sigma. In your, in your equation, you are telling FZ. Minus a by sigma. Yes. Zero point zero two five. Yes. Okay. okay. So I'll get minus a by sigma to be equal to F Z inverse of point zero two five. And a is minus sigma times. No, sir, because already you have taken account of four, then why do you say that minus it's a by sigma? Down. Where did I take account of four? What is account of four? 
uh, how do I really point out here? A is equal to four times f, f inverse of z, 1.95 by two, is equal to minus inverse of blah, 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 blah everything is coming. Okay. On the right side. Yeah. Now, on the left side, you, uh, finally you have concluded 0 0.025 on the right side. And while summarizing, you are again equating Fz is equal to minus A by sigma you are telling. So these are two different ways to approach this sum. So both okay. of them give you the same answer. Okay. I think that see, okay. all this is, uh, it is at some level simple stuff, but think about it very carefully. Okay. okay uh, you are trying to explain graphically there. Is it in the second method you are trying to explain graphically? Yeah. Something right. like that. So, so once you get more comfortable with the Gaussian distribution, you will jump directly from probability of mod x minus phi less than a equals 0.95 to an equation like what I wrote here, fz of minus a by sigma equals 0 0.025. Okay, just that graph and the tails and the what's in the middle and what's outside and divide by two and quickly you go to this fz of minus a by sigma. Okay. Thank you, sir. So, a so couple of things to remember, okay? I, 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 in my lectures, I've talked about CDF, PDF, distribution, what's probability that X is less than something, greater than something and all that. Now, this is nothing but an application of all that to the Gaussian PDF and the CDF, okay? There is nothing new here, okay? A lot of people are asking like, oh, I have not seen this exact thing in the solution. I cannot keep repeating the exact same thing for the Gaussian PDF, for the exponential PDF, for the uniform PDF, nothing, right? So, so I, I've given you a general method to approach these problems for any PDF, any CDF. All we are doing here is using it for the Gaussian PDF, okay? You, you have to get comfortable with this kind of a notion where, where I describe something in a general context and expect you to have the comfort of using it in a particular situation, okay? And I, I cannot possibly cover every particular situation in uh, class, right? So don't, don't assume that these things are new, okay? These things are not new. Uh, you, you have studied these things, except that uh, maybe in the Gaussian context, exactly, uh, you've not studied, but that also is actually not true. In my lectures, I do so many problems involving FC, okay? So you, you should go back and look at it. I think uh, there is a sufficient number of problems I do in my own lectures involving FC because this is quite an important you know, concept. Uh, hello, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, I have a confusion over here. Mm -hmm. Like after uh, describing the graph for uh, X minus five divided by Sigma. Yes. That after that, I didn't get that part actually. Could you please elaborate that once again? So, so X minus five by Sigma, see X is, X is, see, see, remember, I mean, mu equals five and sigma equals four in this problem, okay? So I keep going back and forth between these notations. X is normal uh, mu sigma squared, okay? What is X minus mu by sigma? Is equal to Z. Yeah, so it's, yeah, it has the same distribution Bone as Z. standard right? zero one. Zero, zero one normal, it has the same distribution as Z. That's what I've done here, right? What is X yes. minus five by sigma? That's the X minus that is the C. Yeah, so, so I can go and look for this problem. This is the same as probability that mod Z is less than A by sigma. Okay. Okay. Yes. Sir. So I went from probability of mod X minus five less than A to a problem where you had probability of mod Z less than A by sigma. Okay. Both sir. of these are exactly the same. Okay, okay, now I got it. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. Okay, thanks. Okay, so that's that. Uh, so, so you have to have some comfort with these kind of uh, problems. Okay, let's see. I hope uh, we are back on. There's some issue with connection. Uh, okay. So, so there's this uh, five plus four. Oh, somebody's saying five plus four. Okay, so there's no five plus four. Yeah, there you go. Four FZ inverse of one point nine five by two. That's correct. This is the sort of expression that you will get. There's no five plus four in this problem. Uh, it's a slightly different kind of a 
problem. Uh, please keep that in mind. Okay. Yeah. Four if the inverse of 0.975 is correct. Uh, you can also write, okay, so these things are wrong. You won't get five plus four. Check these things. I think a lot of people have given, uh, okay, so quite a few have got to the right answer, but check this uh, very, very carefully. Okay. Okay, so that's the normal inverse CDF. How are we doing on time? I'm not sure. Okay, about one hour into the time. It's okay. It's not too bad. Okay, so uh, I think that's all I wanted to do uh, about the normal distribution. Uh, these are basic skills uh, involving the normal distribution. Hopefully, you can uh, get some time to practice. Uh, these kind of problems. Uh, I had uh, somehow, I, in my mind, I had assumed that these problems were already shared with you. And I'm, I'm actually surprised that these are not shared with you. I'll, I'll go check and uh, see if uh, you've actually seen the version of these problems. Okay. All right. So uh, there's a exponential. Uh, so we're moving on to the exponential distribution. Uh, this is yet another uh, PDF, which has a very simple CDF. And the CDF is just, uh, you know, PDF is lambda e power minus lambda x, and the CDF is 1 minus e power minus lambda x. These formulae you will get in the exam. There's no need to worry about it. Uh, so, uh, so once you have a simple expression for the CDF, it's possible to write down a lot of these uh, probabilities, uh, probability that x is less than x, be 1 minus e power minus lambda x, x is greater than x is e power minus lambda x. And then x between a and b is e power minus lambda a minus e power minus lambda b. OK, so this is the answer. So for the purposes of this lecture, you can leave the answer in the exponential form, exp of something. Uh, that's OK. Uh, no more simplification is needed. Uh, we're going to do some problems once again. Calculation of probabilities involving the exponential random variable. Uh, once again, like I said, I had assumed you had seen problems like this, but maybe this problem set was not shared with you earlier. Uh, so then this might be a bit new to you. I'm not sure. Uh, when the session started, everybody was complaining that these questions are too easy. So I, I had re the idea got reinforced in my head that you've seen this problem set before, but looks like uh, somehow maybe you've not seen this before. So let's see if uh, you've seen exponential problems before. Okay. There you go. So you can express your answer in terms of EXPs. There's no need to simplify for it. Okay, so the going is a bit slow.
So uh, I think somebody can put the link to the Pear Deck session. I think this person here who probably doesn't know about Pear Deck. Uh, you have to join on Pear Deck and uh, enter the solution, enter the answers there. Thank you. Okay, so answers are coming a bit uh, slowly. So mm -hmm. let me just quickly go through and maybe uh, show what is it that uh, you should be doing here. And then maybe we'll come back and look at what answers people have given. Okay. Uh, so the question says uh, X is, um, the question says X is exponential uh, with uh, lambda three, I think so. Okay, and he asks you to find probability that X is greater than two, given that X is between one and 10. Okay. So what is the first formula you'll use here? Joint and conditional probability. Conditional probability. Conditional probability. Conditional probability. Conditional probability. Conditional probability. So this is probability of A given B. So that's probability of A intersect B. What is A intersect B? X lies between X two, two, and and 10. 10. 2 and 10. Yeah. X lies between 2 and 10. And what's denominator? X, X lies between, X lie between 1, and 1, and 10. 1 and 10. 1 and 10, right? <laughs> so if you remember the CDF of uh, exponential PDF, X lying between 2 and 10 is the CDF evaluated at 10 minus the CDF evaluated at 2. And that, if you remember the exponential PDF, will work out to e power e minus Lambda 6, six minus, minus 6. E power minus 30, right? Divided by? E power minus, minus 3. 3. Minus E power minus, minus 30. 30. Okay. So it's a very simple exercise at some level, but uh, you know, you're not doing anything different here. I think a lot of people get carried away saying, you know, I'm studying suddenly continuous random variables and all that. The essence, essence of probability is always those fundamental basic axioms. There's nothing to it beyond that. It's just that there is this other tools you have to express your probability in terms of some PDF, CDF, something like that. But the underlying ideas are exactly the same. Okay, so you should always remember that. And uh, that's what will help you. Okay. So let's uh, move on. Let's see how people have responded. Yeah, I think most people have got it right. I think that's good to see. Good. Okay. So, so you can see a typical uh, answer where the minus is forgotten in the numerator. These things can happen sometimes. Okay. All right. So let's go to the next question. <clears throat> the same distribution. Now we have to do a slightly different expression. I'll be a little, I hope this is People will come back a bit faster here. Okay, so this is relatively easy. Uh, the first uh, step is to unwrap this mod x minus three greater than one into an event involving x uh, less than greater than type thing. Okay, so what is it? Mod x minus three greater than one is the same as x lying between what and one? Minus four. 
ஒன்னுக்கும்ிட்டி on the probability watch out for these things these are the small things that can cause a an issue for you in getting the correct marks in the quiz okay so the correct answer is e to the power 6 minus e to the power 12 correct all no, positive no 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 the correct answer is this guy this guy here this one one minus what you just said Is that okay? Yes, sir. Okay, got it. One minus. <clears throat> okay. All right. So I think that's all I wanted to do with CDF and PDF. So, so once again, I think tomorrow, if we give you another random variable with another distribution, another PDF, another CDF, that's not a new problem. It's an old problem that you've seen hundreds of times in so many other. Uh, context so you should remember that and then approach it with confidence okay okay so uh, the next uh, big piece that a lot of people talk about is functions of a random variable uh, so there is a standard method and a standard problem a standard type of approach to the question so uh, so uh, <coughs> if the function that you apply on a random variable happens to be monotonic there is a very very simple formula involving either finding the cdf or uh, directly substituting it into blindly into that formula uh, but one more question a lot of people ask is why functions of a random variable how do i visualize these functions of a random variable is there like a, a way to do it etc uh so uh, what i'm going to do is a couple of things i i have a problem which uh, maybe has a slightly practical flavor which gives you a sense of why uh, functions of random variables arise very very commonly in practice very quickly you'll be dealing with functions of random variables and uh, here is one uh, such situation okay so I, i've just you know i have just picked up some uh, hypothetical sort of problem in the life insurance sector okay so i think many of you may be young many of you may be older uh, some of you will know these kind of uh, policies that uh, like like for instance lic sells a lot of these kind of policies i'm not saying these numbers are correct and i've just cooked up some numbers right off the top of my head and i'm sure these numbers are very different uh, but this is this is a situation where a function of a random variable uh, sort of occurs okay now from a high level before you start reading it uh, life insurance is basically you know uh you take out a life insurance policy and if you die right the company gives your next of kin or whoever you nominate a lot of money okay so that's uh, life insurance insurance is always like that right so you pay a small sum of money and get into policy and say that if some low probability event happens you have to give me a lot of money okay so that's uh, that's your deal with the company right you pay a small premium and then you say hopefully a low probability event you dying hopefully is a low probability event and if you die and then the the insurance company pays your next of kin or even you in some case a lot of money so that's uh, that's the nature of the insurance business and uh, probability is uh, something that's very important in insurance so here is here is a here is a situation where uh, uh, it's interesting to look at what happens here okay so uh, someone uh, this is a 30 year old person uh, they they uh, the they are taking a life insurance for 10 lakhs and uh, they for that uh, they have to pay a premium of uh, 30000 per year for 25 years okay after 25 years i mean of course 
before 25 years, if you die, you get 10 lakhs. Okay, the, not you, I mean, you've died already. So some, your next of kin uh, will get 10 lakhs. And, uh, and if it is, uh, uh, if you live, right, in the, in the high probability case where you're alive after 25 years, uh, the insurance company will give you some one-time uh, lump sum payment, uh, 5 lakh. Yeah, I'm sure it's a very bad policy. <laughs> I, agree with you. I just cooked up some numbers for the sake of this problem. You, you can go and look at any of those policies out there. They are like this. I mean, they're sort of like this. Maybe they'll give you some more money after some time. This is some variation of this. Okay, But what is underlying all this is the next line that I've written here. Okay, So there's always a probability distribution on the number of years a person will live after a particular age. Okay, so let's say here, a uh, number of years uh, the person lives. I mean, again, when I say the person, uh, insurance companies use a lot of models based on uh, data about the person. They'll say, you know, if this person is in live this place, he's living this close to something else. Uh, all these things influence this distribution. But I'm just giving you a distribution. I'm just saying this for this particular man after 30. Can you please mute your mic if you're not talking? I think. Uh, thank you so for this particular person i'm saying after 30 how many years he lives has a poisson distribution okay it's just some hypothetical distribution i'm sure there are many more complicated distribution models changes from state to state city to city uh, country to country all over the place and whether you are i mean so many so many equations are there in deciding this uh, number distribution but let's say uh, you, you're going to model it as a Poisson distribution with some lambda. I put lambda 30. Uh, so, so it's reasonable to expect that this person maybe is going to live up to 60 years at least, a good probability. Okay. So I want a distribution for the profit of the insurance company. Okay. So profit can be negative if there is a loss. Uh, but what would be the distribution of profit for the insurance company? Okay. So notice here, there is an underlying distribution which is the Poisson distribution for the number of years the man is going to live. Okay, so let's say capital X is the number of years the man will live. Okay, all right. So that's that's going to be your capital X. That's your random variable. Okay, what is the distribution of that random variable? Number of years that the person lives after 30, it's Poisson with lambda equals 30. Okay, you know the Poisson distribution, right? E power minus lambda power K, E power minus lambda by k factorial okay so there is a there is a distribution there there's a pmf for this distribution okay from the description of the policy okay it should be clear to you that the payout from the company and the money that they got the premium collected by the company is going to be a function of this x do you agree okay so that's something uh, very, very important for you to understand. So, so here is a situation where you have a random variable which comes from some distribution. And what you're interested in, the profit, which is actually the money collected minus the money dispersed, is going to be a function of this random variable. Naturally, what type of function? I'm not going to go into detail here. I'm not uh, writing out what that function is. Uh, you can imagine what it is. It's definitely a function. Uh, for instance, if if uh, uh, if x is one, right? If if x is one, unfortunately, if the person dies within one year of taking this policy, then uh, then you know the company would have collected just thirty thousand, and they would have paid ten lakhs, right? So th there's a huge loss uh, for the company, and likewise you can start calculating. So there is a function which is a function of this random variable x, okay? So I just want to convince you that every single situation where random variables are used, functions of random variables occur very, very naturally, okay? So, so it's very important to understand that and uh, uh, there's no need to be surprised by it. And uh, so, so I, I, I'm not going to solve this particular problem for you. Uh, it's an exercise. You can enjoy your solution. Uh, so, but, but, but I just want to motivate as to why functions of random variables occur uh, very, very commonly. Now, what to do with functions of random variables? So, so how, do you, how do you figure out what happens 
uh, when you you know pass a random variable through a function okay so to to sort of give you a sense of that uh let me just do one, one thing here so uh do you have access to this collab sheet that uh, uh that is there for this course yes sir yes sir yes sir please that you have it's not a figment of my imagination i just thought okay good okay how can this happen okay so i added something today to this uh, this collab sheet uh, let's just wait for the connection to happen okay so there are these standard things that i would have okay and then uh, what i added today is a small little simulation so so you've seen this maybe hopefully you know how to generate a uniform distribution how does the histogram look why it's a reasonable assumption to do a density and all that okay uh, so i added this uh, today functions of a random variable uh, so what i do here uh, so 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 i define a function g of x uh, you can see clearly that it is just seven plus x. I'm adding seven to the function. Uh, and here, what I do is generate uh, three different samples from three different random variables. One is uniform, I'll call it xq, xu, another is exponential, another is normal, right? Some 10,000 uh, samples I'm drawing. And then I pass it through the function g. Okay, so you can see here, I pass it through the function g. And what I do here, if you've seen this uh, sheet before, I'm plotting the histogram before the function, histogram of xu, and histogram after the function. Okay, so blue is before, green is after. Okay, for all three cases, and I've made a little subplot here. You can see, uh, so the function is just x plus seven, right? So notice what has happened. Can you explain in words what has happened here? <coughs> Translated. Yeah, so it's not surprising at all, right? The, dis the, dis the distribution just got moved, you know. I, it, it, it got moved uh, from uh, just added seven uh, to that. Okay. Yeah, so that's good. So what I can do now is uh, simply change this function. Okay. Instead of seven plus x, maybe I want to make it seven plus two x. Okay. Okay, this is what I'm doing. Seven plus x. I made it seven plus two x. I'm gonna run it. It's finished running. Can you explain this? What has happened? <coughs> Translated and scaled. Scaled and uh, <laughs> a fine transformation. Okay, so I, I do discuss this in class. I remember. I think people are using sophisticated terms like a fine transformation and all that. Does it make sense at some level? What has happened here? So, so two things have happened. Just look at the uniform distribution. Yeah. It uh, became broader. Mm. And naturally, the height sort of shrunk. Reduced. Okay. So that is uh, the same theme is there in all the three distributions, right? It became broader and the height shrunk. Okay. Mm. So anytime okay. a distribution becomes broader, the height will sort of naturally shrink, right? So it's not very uh, difficult to expect, but Overall, the class of distribution is the same. Exponential still remains exponential. Uniform still remains uniform. The you know normal still normal. nothing has changed by the affine transformation. Do you agree? Okay. So this, uh, by yeah. the way, this collab notebook is available to you, right? You can go change this function to anything else and fool around with it and uh, you know have fun. By the way, why did I add this seven for illustration? What will happen if I don't add this seven? 
we won't be able to distinguish they'll overlap yeah, they'll all sort of overlap, overlap and uh, it's not a very nice idea okay what do you think will happen here okay let me also add a seven just to you know pull it apart what do you think will happen here what is this function by the way x star star 2 Actually, actually, the power two. Yeah, okay. Are you ready to see? The distribution the... would change. Yeah, look at that. Look at what has happened. Oh my God! I had this nice little uniform distribution from zero to three. All I did was square, and look at this crazy stuff that's going on, right? And uh, exponential. What has happened to exponential? Is it? Sort of something similar. I don't know. And look at what's gone to normal loads, right? Sir, all the three are becoming exponential, right? Uh, um, right. Well, I don't know if they're exponential or not. Look at look at the tail here, right? In the uniform, it's not it's not dying down any any time soon. It's, it's it's going slowly, right? So the so, bigger probabilities have gotten bigger. By squaring, much bigger, so they have lost their shape. You can say a lot of intuitive things, but you know there is uh, uh, there's money in being precise, also. Okay, and if you want to be precise, you have to know how to transform a PDF. Okay, so clearly, the PDF got transformed into something. When I transform the random variable, something crazy is happening to the PDF, isn't it? So you have to pick up skills to know. When I apply a function to a random variable, which is what I would do in practice, right? When when I'm modeling a phenomenon like how many years this guy is this this person going to live, and I model that as a random variable with a distribution based on data or whatever, and then there is a function of that random variable which is interesting to me. I should know how my random variable's distribution will change when it goes through that function. Okay, so functions are extremely extremely important. And it looks like clearly the PDF is going to do some strange things. Okay, so expect strange things uh, when you deal with uh, functions. Okay, so how to deal with functions? <clears throat> there is this popular CDF method. CDF is very easy to find. CDF of a function of a random variable is usually easy to find. Okay, and then uh, one can use the CDF. Once you have the CDF, how will you find the PDF? Differentiate. Yeah. Differentiate. So, so this little technique of finding the uh, PDF of the function of a random variable is uh, is part of uh, statistics and it's extremely important. Okay, so that's what we're going to see next. Sir, uh, sir can you share the Google? Uh, uh, Google. It's already shared. Collab with you. This collab is already shared with you. It's the same one. Okay. The what the there is a collab notebook that is shared in your as part of the course, right? I added it in the same uh, collab notebook. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So here is the first question. Okay, I have a random variable which is distributed between minus five and five. And I want to find the probability that a function of that random variable, three x plus seven, lies between zero and nineteen. Okay, for these kind of problems, you don't need to find the PDF of the transformed version or anything like that. You can directly do these problems. You simply change this event into an event involving x alone, right? Then after that, you are done. Okay, so it's a pretty straightforward problem. Problems like this are extremely important and very easy also. And from here you can go to the PDF. Okay, so I'll come to that in a little while. But uh, this this kind of uh, you know expressions and how to find probabilities for them is extremely important.
Okay, maybe I should key work this out. Okay, so, so the trick to doing all these kind of problems is, uh, is always the same. Uh, so you have to find probability, the distribution of X is given, right? X is uniform. So if you want to draw a picture uniform between minus five and five, uh, you can draw a picture here. Minus five to five, the height is going to be like one by 10. Right, and then uh, I, I'm interested in the event zero less than three x plus seven less than nineteen. Now this is the same as okay. You look at the one side, you get x is less than nineteen minus seven by three. X is greater than minus seven by three. You get that? So this is four. Okay. So this is between minus seven by three, maybe somewhere here, and four. So it is this area. So what did I do here? I converted the event involving three x plus seven into an event involving x, and it is just this uh, area. And uh, the answer will work out to what? One by ten. Four plus seven by three times one by ten, right? 19 by 30. Yeah, so this will come up to 19 by 30. Okay. Three. In some ways, easy. Let me just see how people got it. <clears throat> yeah, 0.63, I think it's 19 by 30. So, okay, I'm going to get 27 by 50. I don't know. 19 by 30 is correct. Uh, so there are the answers, but, but make sure you get this 19 by 30. That's the correct answer. Okay. Okay. So, so this is a relatively simple type problems. You, you should be able to do this. I think it's, it's, uh, I don't know if people are slow or giving away wrong answers, but check this, these kind of problems very carefully. These are bread and butter problems. Uh, when you do a, can you, when you look at these, it's just this is nothing. I mean, I've just taken the same event with respect to X and I've given it a slightly different flavor. Okay. So just approach it in that point. Okay, here's the next one. Give it a shot. So distribution of X is given. There is an event in defined in terms of X cube and X squared. You should try to go back to X as much as possible. These are relatively simple events. Remember X is positive, it's, it's exponential, right? So it takes only positive values. You don't have to worry about negative. It's, uh, it's simpler because of that reason. <clears throat>
Okay, I'll give you a couple of hints. The event x square greater than 1, because x is all positive, right? I don't have to worry about negative. Is the same as what? Same as? X, x greater, greater than, 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 one. than 1. And event x cube is between 8 and 27. X is between 2 to 3. X is between 2 and 3. Okay, so it's as simple as that. So this exponential distribution, x is between 2 and 3, given x is greater than 1. And then after that, it's just probability of a given b, right? That's probability of A intersect B divided by probability of B. So what is A intersect B? A itself, right? A, two to three. X is between two to three. Two to three. By probability that X is greater than one. It's mm. a very simple uh, exponential uh, distribution. Okay. So the answer must be, you know, E power minus eight minus E power minus 12 divided by? One minus E power minus one. E minus four. E to the power e minus, minus, minus four. four. Yeah. Yeah. E to the minus four. yeah. So that's the answer. Oh, no, no, no. There's no e power four minus e power minus four and all that. Yeah. See, this is the correct answer. E power minus eight minus e power minus twelve divided by e power minus four. Okay. This is the correct answer. There's no one minus right. So it's it's given x is greater than one, right? That's just e power minus. Okay. So, so yeah, I think I think I think a lot of people are making small mistakes in in uh, in, in the subtraction and all that. Okay, be, be, be a bit watchful. Uh, see, e power minus twelve minus e power minus six. In, in your mind, you should know that this is wrong because this will give you a negative answer, right? And all these kind of checks. Uh, you can look at carefully. Okay, make sure yeah, this, this is the correct answer. E power minus 8 minus e power minus 12 divided by e power minus 4. That's correct. Okay. So 1 okay. minus e power minus 4. Mm. Uh, see, this uh, probability that x is less than 1 is 1 minus e power minus 4, right? Isn't it? Yes, sir. So probability that x is greater than 1 is e power minus. minus. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. So yeah, so you can simplify it like this. You can multiply this e power minus 4 you know, numerator denominator and you'll get e power minus 4 minus e power minus 8. This is correct. Okay, so this and this are the same things. Okay. Okay, so let's go back and look at one more problem. Sir, excuse me, sir. In the previous problem, we have to find PDF or CDF. Neither PDF nor CDF. You have to find this probability. Okay, sir. Right, you have to find this probability. You will write it as a probability of uh, two uh, ratio of two probabilities and each probability you will express in terms of the cdf only cdf oh, of sir, x, x itself okay oh, sir. so thank you so this one uh, you can write the answer in terms of fz okay
Okay, so we are winding down to some of the last problems in the session. Okay, so it should be done quickly. Okay, so I think people are also getting tired. So let's go look at the responses. One minus FZ 0.5 seems to be a popular response. Uh, two FZ minus one by two. Yeah, I, I like this two FZ minus one by two. I like, I like expressing like that. Uh, is this the same as one minus FZ of 0.5? Are these two the same? Maybe not. A factor of one is missing. Yeah, a lot of people seem to write one minus FZ of 0. 0.5. Is that really correct? There is a two factor, no? Where do you get the two? A lot of people have written 1 minus FC of 0.5. What's the logic for that? How did you get 1 minus FC of 0.5? Anyone who got it wants to explain how they wrote 1 minus FC of 0.5? See, this is normal distribution. So what is probability that... Yeah, they didn't look at X less than minus 1. Is that correct? Right, x squared greater than one actually corresponds to x greater than one, yes, but also x less than minus one. Minus one. Okay, don't forget that x squared is is, a, is this kind of a function, right? It, it's both positive and negative. So this is normally distributed random variable. So it goes positive and negative. So x squared greater than one it translates into either x being greater than one or x being less than minus one. Right, you took one minus FC of 0.5, we have to multiply that by two. Would so, the so would the answer be two minus two FC of 0.5? Yeah, that is the same as two times FC inverse of minus 0.5. Yeah. Right. <coughs> okay, so thank you. So it's two times this. So these are this is the correct answer. Two FC of minus 0.5. And this one is also correct. Two times one minus FC of 0.5. That's also correct. Okay. Watch out for these kind of problems. Okay, so I think we are out to the last type of uh, problem where uh, I, I'm asking you to find CDF of a function and also PDF, which is just the derivative. Uh, the only trick here is you have to, what is CDF? What is CDF of a random variable? It's basically probability that that the random variable is less than something, some variable, you can call it T if you like, or anything else also. So when I say find CDF of 3x plus 7, what am I asking? Find probability that 3x plus 7 is less than some T, okay? So maybe I can, I can do this in some detail. <coughs> so, I forgot what the distribution of x was. It was uniform from minus 5 to 5, yeah, 0 to 5. Okay. okay. So x is uniform 0 to 5. Right. So you have a picture here, which is like this. So the note is not visible. Oops. What did I do? I went to something else. I'm sorry. Is that okay? 
So yes. this is one by five. Okay. And uh, I want the CDF of, say, let me call it Y, which is three X plus seven. Okay. So this is my function, right? So what is CDF? If you, if you want to evaluate FY at uh, some value Y, that's the same as probability that y is, less y, than is y plus than y and that's the same as probability that 3x plus 7 is less than or equal to y and that's the probability that x is less than y minus 7 by 3 yeah y minus 7 by 3 you could do that uh, but before i do all that i always like to fix the range of values that y takes okay so it's something uh, that's useful to take so remember x takes values from Zero to five. Zero to five. So y will take values from what to what? Seven to seven three. to twenty-two. Twenty-two is okay. So you should remember that. So this y takes values from seven to twenty-two. So, okay. so here uh, the function three x plus seven is monotonic. So we can use the standard formula that uh, you described yeah. in the video. Yeah, yeah, you can do that also. But I'm just writing it down because we want the CDF. Okay. Oh. So this one uh, you can easily write. So so your y minus uh, seven by five, seven by three will come here. Okay, if y is between seven and twenty-two, y minus seven by three will come here. So what will be the area under this to the left of this? It's one by five times this, right? That's one by five. Y minus seven by three for y in this range. I'm sorry, seven. Or equal to y less than or equal to 22. Okay. Okay. What will it be for y uh, less than 7? 7 by 3. 7 by 3. 7 CDF will be 0. 0. zero. For y greater than 22, CDF will zero. be 1. Zero. 1. one. 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 <laughs> okay. So that's how the CDF will look. You don't have to worry too much about it. And what will be the PDF? You can just differentiate with Y. You'll get uh, 1 by 15 between 7 and 22. Right? That's again the uniform distribution. Okay, so very standard method. Uh, I just did it in detail because it was the first question I had asked. Uh, so hopefully people figured it out. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, okay. So that's correct. I think uh, most of you have got the correct answer. The range is also important, okay? Worry about the range. Just the next one. So here also you can use the formula or you can use uh, the CDF expression and get the answer. Okay, so in the interest of time, let me just quick and quickly go through this again, a standard formula, 
this is a monotonic function once again. Uh, so you can go through and write it down. Yeah, CDF is one minus e power minus two uh, y power one by three. And y, y takes the values from zero to infinity. Uh, you can differentiate this uh, to get the PDF, I think. Uh, yeah, so there you go. One minus e power minus two c power minus one by three. C raised to the power one by three. Uh, range is zero to infinity is perfect. Uh, when you differentiate, you're going to get uh, a little bit more complicated expression. Let me see. People have given up typing it out. You, you differentiate, you're going to get the PDF. Okay. So it will not be uh, exponential. It will be some crazy type of distribution. Uh, that's something to keep in mind. Okay. It will be some other type of distribution. Okay, so the last one I want to do is uh, this guy. <clears throat> this is probably the most twisted among the three questions because uh, X square is not monotonic. Okay. So this is one particular case uh, that I work in some detail in my slides. Okay. <clears throat> But given all the previous problems, this should be slightly easy, except some algebra there, you don't have different numbers. <clears throat> okay, so, so while you try, I think, uh, let me just quickly go through and uh, finish it off becoming so the answer has to be in fz term uh yeah i've said only yeah okay so let me just quickly show how you do this i think uh x is normal with mean z uh, mean five right and variance one is that correct did i get it right yeah, yes sir yes yes okay and then uh, y is x squared, right? And uh, I want to find uh, CDF. So x takes values in uh, minus infinity to infinity. What about y? Zero to infinity, right? That's something to keep in mind. So fy of y for y in this range is probability that y is less than or equal to y. And that's probability that x squared is less than or equal to y. And that's probability that x lies between minus root y or plus root y and minus root y. Okay. How do you write this in terms of fz? Who can tell me that? fz of root y minus fz of minus root y. Okay, fz of what? Just root y? Root y minus 5. Root, uh, 5, five minus. Yeah. So minus fz of minus root y minus 5. Yeah. Isn't it? So that's the CDF. Okay. Now, how do you do the PDF? Okay, so it's, it's a derivative question. I leave it as an exercise. Uh, it's just function of functions, right? So, so it will be just the derivative of fz evaluated at root y minus 5. And then you will have to again differentiate root y there. So you'll get a 1 by 2 root y. And on the other side, again, you'll get the derivative evaluated at minus root y minus 5. And then you'll divide by uh, 2 root y. But then because of the minus sign, you'll get a plus. Uh, Finally, okay, so it will be the sum of two uh, PDFs. Is that correct? Yes. Correct. What, what mistake I made? There's a there's a mistake I made. No, did I not make a mistake? No. I don't think I made a mistake. So plus five. Plus five. Plus five. No, plus five. It should be minus root 5 minus 5. Minus 5, right? That's, that's what it is. I think it's okay, no? I don't think I made a mistake. Did I make a mistake? No, sir. Oh, okay. All right, good. 
Okay, good. So I think uh, that brings us to the end of this uh, session. Uh, just Thanks to everyone who's uh, participated uh, on this. Uh, so I'm going to end the end the pair deck session. Uh, maybe I can do that later. So I'll just stop sharing. That should be good sir, one kind request, sir. I mean, we would like to have the solution for these uh, problems which you discussed right now. Will that be shared with us? Uh, I, it will be I, I very can... helpful for us to go back because sir, most very... of the time it's like when you say we understand, but when we go back and apply it on a different problem, we are not able to I, solve I, it. I'll, I'll share what I wrote for sure. Okay. Yes, sir. Any more detail? Uh, we'll see. I'll, I'll see if somebody sure, else can add. Yes, but... sir, sir. We'll see. I mean, um, um, I, uh, if, I, I, if it is, I, I at least some of them. Okay. So I'll, I'll ask the instructors to add some details. Whatever available, it should be shared. Okay. Okay. Definitely, this, uh, this, uh, what I wrote, I will share. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 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 Bye-bye. Thank you so much, sir. It was a wonderful session. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So excuse me, sir. Yes. So, sir, I have a doubt, sir. Where we will be using these kind of things in real life? Real life. Yes, oh, how real do you work? It? I gave you an insurance no, example. Sir, I'm uh, basically interested in stock markets, sir. So will it come yeah, yeah, in? No, absolutely. Absolutely. I think so many models in uh, stock market is probably stuff. Yeah. So they all involve different types of random variables and functions of them, etc. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to sign off. Uh, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Uh, thank you. Thank sir. you, sir. Bye, sir. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.